Okay, we're going to start working on the outside rail. One of the things that you want to check, and if you did the, when we were lofting up the curves, this upper edge, when I told you to be very careful to be close to the line and get that as accurate as possible, mirror images on both sides. And now we got the rail set in place, and it's a pretty, it's, it's fairly true along its distance. Uh, it's stiffer. Uh, so you're not going to get a whole lot of ventilation. So when you put it in, starting at one end and go to the other, it's going to maintain somewhat of a uh, of the right height. But go ahead and 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 bring it up to the supper, upper surface of the plywood, and then go along and feel. You don't want the uh, rail material below the plywood uh, because then you're going to have to uh, uh, take the plywood down to to that level. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that either. You don't want the, the outside rail, strike that. You don't want the outside rail higher than the plywood, because then if you have to take down the rail to match the plywood, otherwise if you don't, you'll get a little depression on, in between the inner and outers. Uh, you want the plywood to stand slightly proud. So go along and find out spots. I got a little high here, but I like the curve that I've got. And if you had a spot that was where the rail was a little higher than it should be, just take a hammer and whack it down, sight down it, make certain that everything is in line. Okay, now that I, I'm happy with my, my rail from start to finish and that the uh, nothing is above what it should be, I can, I can stand a little bit of uh, change. Uh, we'll go through now and uh, drill some holes for the three quarter inch uh, three quarter inch screws from the inside out and we'll mark as a um, uh, guide we're going to use those lines those one foot lines remember we took the hacksaw before we took the panel pairs that top panel pair apart on the one foot line so that we know that when we place something in the boat it will be equal distance we don't have to do a whole lot of measuring because we know that this line on this side is the same distance that line is from the stern because we've got we went through all the process of squaring up the hull. So now uh, I've gone through with my uh, sliding square to set halfway down the rail. I've got a, my, my uh, uh, countersink screw and I've got some protection here to keep the little outside. They tend to just slide up and then you get a hole in your rail. So I've got some protection on that. So we'll come along at each one of these That'll help us line up when we get the epoxy on and we're messing around with the clamp. So kind of like guide it along a little bit. So I'll go ahead and, and drill all the holes now and then we'll come back. I've done some tampering with the bow. Uh, that may have been a little early. So, But let me uh, pull this off, get some epoxy. Uh, just mix up the gel magic glue or whatever you use. And I used to use Gorilla Glue, but it was too hard on my wrist to squeeze that. It's, I mean, it's just you got to have a grip like a, a gorilla to get that stuff out. I guess that's why they call it gorilla glue. Uh, I loved it, but it was too hard to work with. So I'm going to use a mix-up gel magic and just smear it on. Um, and then uh, that'll work great. It doesn't drip or anything like that. And it's epoxy and it's waterproof. And it'll, you know, the plywood will come apart before the glue line does. So I'm going to go ahead and drill everything and we'll come back. Okay, one of the things I've done too is I put a bit of blue tape on the top of the rail and then on the... Uh, over the top so that I've got a guide and I've split it with a, with a box knife so I've got it a guide to get me along to start with when I start clamping I'll just have to put a clamp on here and I'm ready to go okay I've got the outside rail on screwed in um, and then I've double clamped in between the screws I had enough to take off the other side to put on here it's always nice if I was going to do both sides I would probably need about another oh, 10, 10 clamps uh, and I'll get to that number pretty soon. Uh, okay, I got my gel magic put on. I used the uh, scraper, uh, the serrated uh, scraper that we used when we were scarfing to uh, even out the epoxy so I've got a nice nice bleed out. Uh, it, you don't want to waste too much. I mean, it, it, uh, it will spread underneath. If I was using Gorilla Glue, it would have expanded all by itself. Uh, the other thing I didn't do uh, uh, I tell you about that I did off camera this outside rail still gets the way I do it, it is a uh, bevel on the uh, inside lower edge 
what happens there is instead of having that square 90 when it comes to painting, I've got a little bevel in there. I can roll the uh, masking tape back under it uh, and then uh, I can paint up close. Uh, I probably, I'm going to try that on the uh, inside uh, spacers. On the bottoms of them I'll put the, a little bit of bevel in. I didn't do it on the stern panel because I got ahead of myself there, but I'll do that on the, on the little guys. So Okay, I've just finished drilling uh, some longer holes through this set of uh, two sets of, of inner rails, the spacer and then the first uh, outer support. Uh, they were like inch and uh, three quarter. Let me measure them here, yeah. Inch and three quarter. They're stainless steel and they're deck screws uh, with a uh, five sided or a torque head. Either one will work. And I've screwed those in. This I've already epoxied these pieces in. So now I've got this next piece. I'm going to run three up on the back, on the stern, and then three up on uh, the side rails coming into the corners to give me a little bit extra width. Uh, the other thing I did too is it was a nice day Saturday and so I took my table saw outside. I don't like to do it in the barn because there's just too much dust around. So I took it outside and put a bevel in. So these things will, instead of fitting, you know, at a, at a ramp going up like this with that bevel on the bottom, it'll go in at a slight angle so it'll come up and kind of hump over and uh, make it a little more uh, attractive when it gets shaped in place. Uh, so I, and also I ripped out some uh, more rail material out of some other stuff I had for the uh, spacer blocks, which uh, will, once I get the end pieces set in place, they'll be at least 10 inches, maybe 12 inches long before the first gap. But then I have to figure out the spacing because there's two sets of oarlocks that go in, and I usually like to have depending on the spacing, around 14 inches uh, for that uh, spacer between the inner and outer rails and the hull panel to uh, absorb some of the load and carry the stresses out a little bit farther. And in those, because they're longer and they're in curvy parts of the, uh, of the hull, I have to sipe one of the edges to get them to bend, otherwise they would be trying to, those little short pieces don't like to bend like the longer ones do, so they would be trying to distort the, the hull side. So I put little sipe cuts in them, about, oh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch deep in the, in the thickness, uh, spaced out about every three quarters of an inch, and I'll show you that when we come around the time to it, to get them to curve to the hull. So now I've got the, these guys in, I'll go ahead and uh, pre-drill these, and like I said before, Make sure you write epoxy on the side that's supposed to get it because I have in the past traded port and starboard and got inside and outside wrong and uh, it's like then you got to scrape it all off uh, and clean it up. Otherwise you got to cut a new piece and they can be a little, uh, a little uh, complicated. And that is why in that last, uh, in the first segment on this corner, a uh, story about the rails and, and the corners uh, you can do this any way you want. If you got a nice big, uh, you know, glue or epoxy up, glue up a couple slabs of uh, plywood. If you want to make a nice, just you know, arc across here and then taper in the sides and then stick it in, that's fine. You can make it whatever you want. I'm trying something new on, on this boat with these staggered rails coming in to um, just as a change because before uh, I had been making these. Oh, fairly good sized corner blocks and because of the way the angles come in I had to add some plywood to the bottom to raise it up to make them thick enough because I didn't have it would have been easy if I had two inch thick uh, hardwood stock uh, or if you have some I mean that's the way to do it but you've got so many angles coming in and when with the inner rails and the uh, spacer blocks coming in there's a lot of cutting in there at angles and it can be quite complicated and each side is a mirror image of the other so when you get one set up with the right angles and then you got to do the other one then it's completely opposite and uh, I have uh, made a lot of scrap pieces so uh, let me get on with it and we'll get back